everyone, my name is Maria Young and welcome to my channel. In today's episode, you are in for a favorite plant spotlight treat. And the favorite plant that we're gonna be focused on today is the Philodendron Histatum, also known as the Silver Sword. And we're gonna be talking all about this wonderful plant. I'll be sharing with you some in detail information and of course, I'm gonna be telling you all about how to grow it. So this beautiful plant right here grows native in Brazil, but I am sad to report that within the natural conditions in the wild, within the rainforest in which it grows, this is actually completely extinct. So I'd like to ask for you guys to do your part, grow your philodendron histatum well, and let's all ensure that this plant doesn't go completely extinct. So first and foremost, I think it's important to note that this is a very easy to grow plant considered a low maintenance plant and is quite hardy and aggressive growing. This plant, once it matures, can grow so fast reaching up to about 10 feet in length. So you definitely have to make sure that you have ample space and also a structure that can support the weight of its growth. This is a climbing plant, so in the wild it is known to grow on trees and also other vegetation. And one of the most unique features on this plant, of course, is the very striking features that can be found in the foliage. And as you're seeing right here, you are seeing a very beautiful bluish grayish silver hue on the leaves, which really makes this quite unique as you do not find that often within philodendron varieties. And you are also noting on that very beautiful shape and formation of those leaves. And what you can see guys is that it does grow in somewhat of a triangular shape. But as this plant grows, as the leaves mature even greater than what it is now, it'll actually grow longer and extend outwards and will become more of what the name states, that silver sword characteristic and formation of those leaves. So again, very, very striking are the leaves and definitely makes this plant stand out a mile away. It should also be noted that these leaves right here are not only beautiful to look at, but they are beautiful to touch as well as it does have a very velvety texture to the leaves. And these leaves actually grow in somewhat of an upright motion where you're gonna see the tip of the actual arrowhead or the tip of the sword will kind of reach for the sun or reach for the sky. And guys, in all honesty, this is a plant that I do consider a classic. I mean, because it is so unique and striking, I mean, like a convertible, it never goes out of style. So this is one that's going to remain on my favorite list forever and ever and ever. So let's go ahead and talk about the care tips and how to grow this plant. Now, because this is a tropical growing plant, of course we know that it does like its warmer conditions and the prime conditions to grow this plant would be between 55 degrees Fahrenheit all the way up to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. But I do have to tell you, I grow this plant in my garden in Florida and our temperatures can reach up to 100 degrees and up. So guys, don't fret, this is a tolerant plant. It can survive in warmer conditions and also can go a little below 55 degrees. I've actually kept this within 40 degrees before. And the best lighting condition for this plant would be your bright indirect sunlight and that is gonna give it its best growth potential. But of course, this can also tolerate shadier conditions as well, but you may find that it can grow a bit leggy. This does grow within tropical rainforests, so yes, it can appreciate good humidity. So providing it with some form of humidifier or perhaps spritzing it throughout the day, or even providing it a pebble tray will really help this to grow and prevent it from drying out or getting those crispy leaves. And the type of soil-based material or media
media that you want to use on this plant is something that is fast draining, something that is organic, and something that doesn't retain too much moisture. You definitely don't want it compacted to where it can choke out the roots because even though this likes to be evenly moist, it does not like to sit in soppy wet media. And the watering on this plant is really quite simple. You only water as it becomes dry and you can really tell when it's time to water when the top layer of the soil about an inch or two is dry then it is a good time to water your plants. And of course guys if you want to keep this plant in tip top condition where it is growing at its fullest and greatest potential you definitely do want to fertilize it and I would suggest to fertilize it about once a month with a well-rounded fertilizer and at reduced strength. And propagating this plant is quite a cinch. It's all a matter of just taking stem cuttings and of course propagating them and you can have more and more wonderful and beautiful and very unique plants. The more the merrier, I say. Again guys, this is one of my classics, my all-time favorites. It will remain on that list forever. It is definitely a unique plant. I don't know of another plant exactly like it. And man, you are really going to get a bang for your buckaroonies on this one. As you can see, it is definitely well worth having in your collection. And I know you can see why it is absolutely one of my most favorites. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to yet another episode of My Tropical Plant Adventures. I hope you did like this video and of course if you did, make sure you give me a thumbs up, subscribe, click that bell notification button so you guys will know exactly when I do post a new video. And with that being said, you guys already know I truly do love and appreciate each and every one of you guys all and I will see you guys later and I'll also grow with you guys later as well. I'll see you guys on my next adventure.